obviously Tesla has been doing a lot just across the board with the cars and the stuff you're tearing apart. I mean, are there any other kind of manufacturer EV manufacturers that you're seeing that kind of is they're doing their own unique thing or that's kind of standing out or is it just pretty much all the entries that you're seeing are just kind of been not even in, uh, worth reviewing or looking more into? Um, if, if we look at battery technology and you look at battery companies, there's some really interesting things that are going on. But the OEMs um, don't make their own batteries. Um, they want to buy this and they want to buy that. And so consequently, they don't have, a, they're, that, that's not part of their core competency. Maybe in the future, but certainly now, not now. Electronics wise, um, it's hard to beat Tesla. So the only guys that I think could come close there are some Chinese guys that are pretty good, but uh, but I think the only company that could come close is Volkswagen. Volkswagen is the only one that uh, that I look at and see um, because you know things happen. Um, um, as a consultant and whatnot, people are asking about this or asking about that, and so and sometimes you know we we get into a situation with a customer and they say, look, we can't hire you, but how about looking at this and just telling what we what you think especially in in this day and age where you know everything is um, you know everyone's struggling and from what i can see the only one that really and truly has something that that's uh, unique or better or exciting is volkswagen that's it i mean and volkswagen as you know owns audi and porsche and, uh, and whatever but but uh, they uh you know, I think with I think they had that diesel problem, and I think that yeah. the uh, the diesel issue <clears throat> actually was a disaster for them. But it also forced them into looking at how do we get rid of this this ugly stigma of being, you know, guys that are trying to pollute the planet. And so, consequently, as they moved into EVs, they went in in a big way, and um, you know the the Germans are very, very famous for um, coming up with good ideas and, and moving in a new direction really quite quickly, much faster than we see here. So I'm, um, and they're very inventive and they still have tradesmen and they still have lots of engineers that they're pushing out the door. We have a hard time. Uh, in fact, lots of, in fact, I've got, uh, I will tell you, I, 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 fight, I, I hire foreigners because um, they're looking to get into the United States. Uh, they've been well trained, and and if I could, I'd, I'd hire as many um, German um, German um, engineers as I could. They they uh, they they get excited about things. Germans and, and British uh, engineers. Do, do you think uh, it's it's interesting that's uh, what you're saying about Volkswagen? Because that's at least publicly, that's definitely been really the message and the products they're announcing definitely aligns with that. So it's, it's definitely interesting to hear that from someone like yourself, who's much more to be on the PR and marketing things and actually seeing the product and dealing with who's making the decisions and actually executing is, do you think, I mean, and that example you give is perfect where it is Volkswagen kind of had a, uh, a moment where they had to decide who they're going to be moving forward because right. they had such a huge incident. Do you, do you think that is really the only motivating reason that a domestic or some other auto OEM will really kind of change the course of the ship to finally invest and kind of go all in because from a lot, at least my perception from what I've seen in kind of the, uh, at least the domestic auto industry. And once again, Volkswagen does have to deal with some of those European regulations. It's been more of a kind of t uh, putting the foot in to kind of test the waters and slow, gradual kind of release and meet, whatever ZEV credit mandates that California or some state is requiring versus kind of making the full investment to go in. Do you think that's mm. going to be what continues or do you think there is going to be something other than they realize that's the only thing that's selling that's going to motivate them to get into that kind of uh, space more aggressively? Okay. So there's a guy, his name is Joel Barker and um, <clears throat> he, um, he talks about something uh, called paradigms. They're the boxes that you live in. 
And, um, and Joel Barker says, uh, when a paradigm shifts, everyone goes back to zero. And, um, and I believe that that's where we are right now. The paradigm is shifting. And um, he has lots and lots and lots of examples of people who saw that the paradigm could move, but decided to stay where they were and then basically vanished. Uh, one of the best is the, um, is, uh, is the courts movement watch that was invented by the Swiss. They chose not to get involved. And they basically walked away from the courts watch because they had so much invested in the uh, in the gears in the in the fine detail that they could crank out inside their their shop, and so consequently they lost almost the whole market to um, basically um, um, Texas Instruments and uh, Seiko uh, Seiko Watch Company. I mean, blew everybody away. Everybody had one of these little watches. They were dead accurate. They uh, you could get them stylish or you could get them whatever you want. But now everybody has a watch with a battery in it. And yet the Swiss at the time thought that that was just ridiculous. Who's going to want to buy a battery when all you have to do is, you know, that kind of thing. I think we're, we are in that same situation. And, um, and uh, I think that these guys, um, I think a lot of them are going to hold on and, and, uh, there's another thing that uh, that it's uh, it's called scotoma. It's where there's something right in front of you, but you can't see it. <clears throat> it's a psychological problem. And again, Joel Barker says, when the expectations don't match the results, people physiological can, physiologically cannot see the data. And I think that there's a lot of OEM guys that are into that situation. It's right in front of them, but they can't see it. So if you think about it, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you've gone into the basement looking for a hammer or something like that. And you look around, you can't find it. And so you yell at your wife and say, hey, do you move the hammer? And she comes down and she picks it up because it was right in front of you and you didn't see it. And that's because the brain has got power over the eyes. And if the brain says, I can't see you, no, it's not here. It's not here. Someone moved it. Someone moved it. You physiologically can't see the data. The same thing I think is true. It's true. What's happening is, is in fact happening with a lot of the OEMs. The guys that basically ran into the barrier, uh, and, and I mean that sincerely when I'm talking about VW, they ran into that barrier uh, with the diesel problem. They had no other choice, no other choice than to move into some other direction. And uh, I call that the luxury of adversity. When, you, um, when you're when you right up against the, the, the brick wall, your brain works a lot faster. I mean, it's one thing to sit in a hammock or like you say, put your toe in the water. It's quite another if you're, you know, in an airplane and it's headed for the ground and you're allegedly going to be the only guy that's going to be able to pull this thing out of the out of the steep dive you learn how to fly a plane in like about two seconds right if i pull it back maybe it, you know that's gonna that's what's gonna happen um you're gonna have uh you're gonna have somebody like that trying to pull the uh pull the airplane or steer the ship in a new direction because you're headed for a big rock or you're headed straight for planet earth Thanks for joining us. Be sure to visit our website, connectingthegrid.com. There you can listen to our podcasts, contact us about sponsorship, or even be a guest on Grid Connections. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a positive rating on your favorite podcast or video streaming service. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out a lot too. Thank you again, and I look forward to us learning more together soon.